Yeah, I'm admitting everyone. Simply go. <laughs> I'm admitting everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, quality Good is evening. not an Good evening, sir. Good evening, one and all. Let's we start with the, our session today. Uh, quality is not an act. It is a habit. Quality is never an accident. It is always a result of high intention, sincere efforts, intelligent direction, skillful execution. It represents the wise choice of choices we make over many available alternatives, right? Jod Vikare welcomes you all, speakers and the audience. We welcome you all to the webinar monetizing quality going beyond FAT and SNF. To start with our expert panel, I would like to introduce Mr. Rajat Pandya as our quality tech expert. Rajat Pandya is co-founder and CEO of Faunatech, an agri-diagnostic company based out of Bangalore, India, operating in dairy sector focused on early detection of acute diseases, monitoring cattle health, and screening milk quality at the farm level. Welcome, sir. Uh, then we have among Hi. us our academic expert, Dr. Rajeshwaran Silvarajan. Dr. Silvarajan is professor of public policy at Development Management Institute, DMI, Patna. He has over 40 years of experience in dairy and rural sector across in dairy and rural sectors across India and Southeast Asia. Dr. Silvarajan has carried out num numerous development and business projects, including planning planning, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of daring and elite micro-enterprises. Welcome, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Representing processing expert, we welcome Mr. Sanjay Pandey from Banas Dairy, Palanpur. Mr. Sanjay Pandey is general manager of quality assurance and research and development of Banas Dairy, Palanpur, which is Asia's largest dairy plant. A manufacturing and operations leader, Mr. Pandey has multiple decades of experience in product development, greenfield and brownfield projects, and continuous quality and operational improvement. Welcome, sir. Thank you. We will be also joined by Mr. Tarun Sridhar, IAS, in short time. Our, he is our policy expert for the evening. Mr. Tarun Sridhar is former secretary of Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry, and Daring government of Government of India. And I am Simran Deep Singh, dairy analyst, uh, aspiring dairy analyst, and a student of Garvasu as moderator of the session. This evening, we will try to establish next in line major influences of milk pricing factors and assess readiness of Indian dairy industry to compete in global dairy markets in terms of quality milk produced cost effectively. Without taking much of time, we will start with our first segment of the evening. Figuring about that what are quality parameters, how they can be evaluated. For the starters, I would like to ask Mr. Pa Rajat Pandya, what is milk? How a tech expert defines milk? What is quality milk and how it can be assessed? Please start with enlisting parameters and the technologies around it. Mr. Pandya. <clears throat> Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and uh, thank you for uh, pulling out the time for the session. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Simran Deep, uh, for uh, inviting me for uh, this discussion with uh, the esteemed panel, um, with a lot of expertise um, from, from the ground. <clears throat> As Simran uh, uh, Deep uh, uh, introduced and suggested, I am um, the co-founder and CEO at Fonatech. We are a agri-diagnostics and uh, biotechnology company based out of Bangalore in India. We're working on 
detecting critical diseases for dairy sector at the farm level, managing animal health, and also testing for quality at the last mile at the farm directly. This is a little intro, uh, <clears throat> intro, in, introduction about what we're doing and, and about my background. Uh, coming straight to the point and the topic for today is on quality assessment, quality buying, and going beyond fat and SNF. Very interesting topic uh, to start with. And that's where, in fact, our vision and our thought process started. And that's where we think that the second dairy revolution begins with assessing the quality of milk for next inline parameters and also for managing animal health health at the at the farm level directly so going beyond fat and snf obviously that's where the dairy revolution started we all know about it and uh, that has been a, a huge benchmark and milestone for the sector for the growth but that's where we personally feel <clears throat> that uh, beyond that, there are a lot of multiple parameters like SEC and other uh, parameters for antibiotic uh, uh, testing on the residue part for other diseases and other parameters which can be tested at the farm level, at ground level, also at also the manufacturing level for, for, for providing better quality of raw milk for the production and eventually increasing the value added products. We all know the, the, the percentage of uh, production and export from India is very low. It's almost about 3% and is very low against the world standard. Wow. And we personally feel that the biggest reason for that, one of the biggest reasons is, is not getting the optimal quality of milk uh, with low SEC somatic cell count uh, quality from ground okay. zero. Um, from the farm, farm itself. To improve the quality of milk, we have to start from from the farm itself, sorry, where the sir. milk. I, uh, sorry, disturbance. I would like to request audience to keep their mics off during the session to avoid any disturbance between the discussion. Please. So that's where that's where we feel that the quality standard management, animal health, and everything has to start from the farm, and somatic cell count being one of the most um, uh, most important uh, uh, factor for quality after fat and SNF obviously has to be tested uh, and managed at at the farm itself. By the time we test milk at the plant level, it's very late because the one of the biggest reason for high somatic cell count is a disease called mastitis, and managing mastitis and animal health from ground is the most critical factor. Almost 30% of milk, in milk animals are infected by mastitis globally. And uh, that's where we feel that we need to have a, a solution, a, a point of care device, which can be installed at the farm level. And uh, uh, we can enable periodic testing for milk for the quality standard alone, not alone, but also for the health of the animal. Because to improve the, personally, I feel that to improve the quality of milk, we need to first take care of the animal. We need to take care of their health, the feed, fodder, their environment, their uh, entire breeding and, uh, uh, you know, overall uh, uh, health condition. So once the animal is, is healthy, happy, we obviously will get a very high quality milk production uh, from point A. And that then eventually obviously have to be, that milk has to be carried along uh, uh, um, to in the supply chain to the milk unions to to provide them access with uh, with high quality milk which can be in turn uh, changed uh, uh, produced for value added products like cheese butter ice cream and all the other uh, uh, value added products so this is you know in a nutshell uh, my uh, and our personal thought process uh, on at at Fonatech and that's where you know uh, we are we are working on on uh, developing. Uh, and deploying our technology for last mile um, animal health management uh, uh, and quality assessment. I will just, uh, I would like to just, uh, you know, walk you through uh, our, uh, um, 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 uh, a short presentation, what I have uh, a deck in, <clears throat> with which I would like to um, uh, talk more about uh, the technology and how we can uh, 
basically <clears throat> um, enable the entire ecosystem. Uh, is my screen visible, please? It's visible. Simran? Yes, sir. right. So, <clears throat> at Fonatec, you know, that's where uh, uh, our understanding and belief is that the secondary revolution be should begin with understanding the milk better. And every drop is encoded with a valuable information, not just on the quality, but also on animal health management. And we're focused on uh, uh, detecting somatic cell count, testing cell somatic cell count for detection of a very critical disease called mastitis, which we all know about. It's one of the biggest problems in the dairy sector. But then the beauty of the platform is that we can also uh, add different biomarkers like uh, a BHB for ketosis, beta lactam for antibiotic residue, and other as we move forward. <clears throat> The problem of mastitis, I don't want to, you know, repeat, but obviously is, is one of the biggest problem uh, uh, in the dairy sector where uh, the other uh, others are infected, and uh, uh, it's it's a huge uh, uh, loss in production, animal health, and needs to be early detect detected at uh, uh, the farm level for uh, uh, critical um, health conditions and also managing <coughs> cattle health and milk product production. Globally, the the losses are huge. Uh, which we know about is in terms of and almost 20% of milk is uh, lost in production and then 30% um, <clears throat> uh, of uh, in-milk animals are infected. So that's where our technology uh, can uh, really, we think that can really help help in testing different biomarkers for uh, not only for animal health, but, uh, but also on the quality standards, specifically for SCC and antibiotic residue <clears throat> and other parameters. So Fauna is a you know uh, handle device uh, uh, for testing different biomarkers uh, um, <clears throat> for animal health and uh, quality uh, purposes. And uh, this is a snippet of how the technology works. Um, uh, it's a point of care device where we use strip based technology uh, for testing different biomarkers. And uh, 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 um, you know, so so personally, what what I feel that we need to create a closed loop animal health management platform where we can detect uh, for uh, different diseases at early stage and manage, manage and monitor animal health, cattle health, because eventually that will increase the quality of the, of the milk. So <clears throat> um, that's what our thought process is that we need to start from point A. So this is a very good example of the use case, you know, what we have currently, we, we test for fat and SNF uh, 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 on the quality standard at the DCS level. But uh, uh, that's where we feel that we need to test for other parameters like SCC and uh, uh, antibiotic residue and other uh, uh, markers at the uh, um, DCS level to start with, and then funnel it down and then go further down uh, to to the farm level. So, so, so this is the this is the second use case. Uh, um, audience, please Imran, uh, you can... keep your mic at mute. Yes, uh, Mr. Ritesh, please. Uh, can you mute your mic, please? Maybe Simran, you can do it from your side uh, as a, a host, I think. So. so this is the second use case on how the you know technology can be deployed. Uh, it's just not fauna, but also something, you know, very uh, other technologies which can be should be deployed at the farm level. Uh, and and we've seen a very uh, uh, good benefit, huge benefit uh, 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 in our early deployments and pilots where, where we've seen 22% increase in, in milk production uh, as we've been able to detect uh, the disease, especially mastitis at early stage. We've seen a reduction in, uh, uh, by 55% uh, in, uh, in the mastitis cases and has led to a, a huge uh, uh, savings uh, on the veterinary cost, medication cost, uh, and overall, uh, the intern effect is that we're able to reduce the antibiotic usage uh, because we are uh, able to, with, with such kind of technology, we, we can use, uh, uh, detect the disease at early stage head on, and then uh, in turn reduce the antibiotic uh, residue in the mill. So overall, uh, we feel that by deploying such kind of technologies, uh, not just fauna, but also all the other uh, available in the market. We can uh, actually improve the animal health and also increase the quality of milk. Uh, and we've seen almost like, you know, uh, huge savings uh, of, of, of almost 10,000 per uh, animal <coughs> per year in milk animals.
that's where our thought process is that is that detecting mass that is just the beginning uh, uh, we are we are aimed at building a menu of biomarkers that can predict the clinically relevant changes across various health and <coughs> animal health categories and that's where our focus is on on uh, disease management and also the quality standard which is uh, 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 also based on fats snf somatic cell count antibiotic residue protein as we move forward <coughs> So this is more snippet and details on, on, on the project, what you've done. Uh, so I don't really want to talk like, you know, too deep on that, but covering on the important uh, aspect is that uh, um, <clears throat> is, is uh, uh, that we need to think uh, beyond fat and SNF. Uh, uh, the first rev milk revolution, uh, white revolution was uh, purely uh, on uh, uh, the quality standard. And uh, I think... Uh, um, uh, we should take a cue from that and learn from that and then take it forward and uh, add more on the uh, quality but also on the animal health uh, and uh, help uh, and uh, work for the entire ecosystem uh, for the dairy sector uh, which can actually create a long-term uh, benefit and impact for uh, the farmers to start with uh, for the societies for the dairy corporate societies uh, the animal, uh, uh, the milk unions, and and the entire business model. Because um, personally, if you ask me, uh, I think India is yes, obviously India is the uh, biggest milk uh, producer country uh, in the world. And but unfortunately, our exports are very low. So uh, for that, we need to have a very high quality uh, somatic, low somatic cell count, SCC count. In the milk. In fact, uh, I have I've uh, uh, participated in few few shows in in Europe and US, and there SEC is is a uh, is a very big factor uh, on the quality uh, side. So that's where we feel, and our focus has been personally. If you ask me, especially you know we are an India Indian company uh, designed and developed in India, and focus that we need to have technologies which can be deployed in the Indian market. Uh, for the Indian farmers, uh, we need uh, something sir, small like handy. Ask you, one right. thing I would like to ask you, what is your outlook on the quality testing technologies? How they are improving day by day and what kind of technologies we are going to see in coming few, coming days, at uh, one year or five year time time period? What kind of new technologies very, are coming? Very interesting. So uh, uh, obviously there are a lot of uh, new technologies on, uh, on uh, uh, you know, spectrum, uh, spectro, uh, spectrometry and other uh, uh, diagnostics based on AI and uh, uh, machine learning, which uh, are deployed at the farm and also at the DCS level can be deployed over there and also at the, at the milk union level. So, <clears throat> which again, you know, has, has a big menu uh, of biomarkers for quality and also for, uh, for the disease management. <clears throat> so, so how that the feedback loops is working at the your end uh, that uh, how you're getting the feedbacks from processing or procurement uh, professionals and translating into that product or technology how the feed lo uh, feedback loop is it in place is it working or what kind of challenges you are facing that we want feedback from the farmers or we but we want feedbacks from the professionals or that or your comments on that please very interesting so uh, um the the feedback has been uh has been very uh, uh very um uh, interesting and also very uh, welcoming and uh, encouraging, I would say. Uh, we have done our pilots with Bamul uh, here in Bangalore and with Amul at uh, uh, Anand uh, with the Kara uh, Milk Union and also with other uh, <coughs> few private brands. Uh, so um, the conscious level, obviously, on, on the quality uh, procurement is very high. Uh, sir is from, uh, uh, you know, Sanjay sir is from Amul. Obviously, uh, you know, he can throw more light on that. And uh, uh, the, so the, the the awareness is very high and that's where the adoption we feel that uh, is uh, uh, is very uh, encouraging on the new technologies uh, uh, for uh, improving the uh, quality and also animal health from point A, which is the, the farmer. So moving on further. Each and every stakeholder of Indi uh, Indian dairy industry, from farm to folk, must create a culture where food safety and nutritional you soundness is so a paramount. I, I would like to request audience to please keep on posting questions in, Q uh, in the chat section. We will take questions in, in, in a while. Now moving towards our next segment, the consumer demand outlook. I would like to invite Dr. Silva Rajan and would like to know his assessment of what consumers want. Do consumers know their milk exactly? 
are they aware about the quality expects expects beside malai cream or khoa what is the consumer level awareness about the safety of polypack or processed milk coming through the organized channels mr sarvarin sir the please your mic is off please yeah thank you simran and thank you prashant for this opportunity to uh, express some of my ideas and opinions on this forum and it's a very good initiative a public initiative and i think uh, we should have more such initiatives uh, on the public forum because this is an opportunity for us to come out in open and discuss threadbare what is required as you rightly said from the consumer end the indian you talk about the indian consumer let's be very clear about that as of now i am not i am not getting into the outside market at all export market just now rajat i talked about that at uh, uh, we are the largest producer of milk in india and the world <laughs> i mean i'm sorry it's become a joke sorry i will very very cut and right uh, say 30 years you have been the largest producer of milk and your export is nearing zero near zero i mean you there is nothing there is nothing to export as such a few players doing a few tons 10000 tons of smp or 10000 tons of uh, butter butter or butter oil i mean is a drop in the ocean has got no meaning at all sorry i'll be very high. i'll be pl- point rightly blank about i mean i have got nothing to grind in this axe uh, on this so first is a, let me t- so we are still in the domestic market and we'll stick to the domestic market i agree with rajak that we have to improve upon the standard plate count in terms of somatic cell count perfectly okay that's perfectly okay but we have to re- realize that we are in india and the indian consumer any indian consumer would prefer even today prefers fresh milk and fresh milk india ka parampara hai ki hum usko ubal ke peete hain i do agree that there is a loss to the farmer yes that's which is he is he is calculated around 10000 rupees per animal per year that's a huge amount in fact my state is i agree with again rajat saying that for example news in in, in uh, usa has a national milk mastate is control board there is a na- there's a national level board working on mastate control we don't have a single person talking about it i mean i, I was happy to see that rajat started with the whole situation about uh, mastate is that's a total different ball game altogether i mean 50 saal ke baad you today we are talking about mastate is the government is still not talking as a private player rajat is talking because there is he feel there is a need to talk about it not the policy maker unfortunate anyway the indian consumer boils milk and drinks it and prefers fresh milk we are organized we are organ, organized players and organized players even today work only about 30 to 35% of the total marketable surplus which is 15 to 16% of the total milk production produced because 50% nearly 50% gets consumed by the household itself which produces milk so only around 50 50 to 55% comes out of marketable surplus out of which 30 to 35% goes into organized trade private players and co- cooperative equally they are now around equally competitive they it's a varies from state to state so i would look because the consumer is going to pay for it finally whatever you we do for example i have just i was just thinking about per test if you cost about a per test even if it cost 10 paise per test even if it is a half a liter or a tanker even a tanker also requires a 0.5 ml 0.25 ml of milk and a, even a half a liter of milk also requires 0.25 ml of milk okay for your normal testing as such it cost even if if you assume that it's a 10 paise multiply by 750 because morning and evening two samples are going to come who is going to pay for the cost the consumer is he or he she asking for it i leave it as a question mark we may be crying 
our our throats core saying that quality is important is the consumer asking for it what if a consumer again indian consumers are different levels so they segmented into it's been took first is that indian consumers two two milks are very clear one is a cow milk one is a buffalo milk and last 30 years we have because of cross breeding we have got into a in cross breed milk also so even within the cow there is a cow milk there is a cross breed cow milk and an indigenous cow milk and buffalo milk so we already have three segments divided by the fresh and reprocessed reprocessed that has not doesn't have any any quality trace back it doesn't have anything to do with trace back it's a cow milk or buffalo milk with the carrot dam consumer that prefers consumer has a does have a preference yes we may carry dam as a processor as a policy maker unfortunately the policies are 55 years old it is today not talking about the consumers which whom the taste and needs of the consumer even today the, the urban and you cut it into rural and urban sector rural market is very very different maybe we what we are talking about is an urban market which is a minuscule portion even less than 15 to 20% of the total market so let's be very clear about perspective from where we are talking hindi mein ek kaha hota hai ki thukne ka to upar dekhne ki ki aap upar dekhte hain niche dekhte hain we have raised that meaning where are we standing and talking and who are we addressing to if it's a domestic market urban and consume urban consumer rural consumer clean you are if you are talking to the rural consumer we are not talking to the rural consumer and if you are talking to the rural consumer we are not talking to the urban consumer and interestingly both boil the milk even in your every one of our house whoever is listening on this close forum i i'm sure i don't i don't find any uh, women here and surprisingly i mean it's a milk dairy cooperative i mean dairy forum and i find very little women on this on this forum you ask any lady at household not to boil and milk drink no indian consumer i'm talking about again so i would just leave it at saying that quality is that it has to define by the consumer and i have already told you the consumer has to be has to divide it into segment into urban consumer rural consumer cow milk consumer buffalo milk consumer cow milk exotic cow indigenous cow and fair enough animals mass status has to be controlled no doubt about it no doubt about it and in fact i would urge this forum saying that one of the most important things we should recommend to the government of india or any damn place saying that there should be a national level mass status control system which and cheap not very costly i mean i would work, uh, testing is okay that's a testing is a after effect story i am a policy maker and i would prefer to go for a preventive rather than a uh, rather than a after the thing i keep i mean uh, i keep saying that mastered is ek bar gaay ko aapka gaay ab bhans ko ho gaya to video lost the case and that that turns 10000 rupees per year can you imagine i'm sure the farmer is not even he's not even earning 5000 rupees per net profit from per animal per year which is a minus 10 5000 is all in losing yeah thank you i'll stop there so coming on the part that uh, consumer price sensitivity is uh, sensitivity is also one problem just as you mentioned that uh, who is going to pay for the premium that uh, according to my personal understanding i would say that if we go for the quality production that clean milk production or good milk good manufacturing practices the cost of the production also get lose on that can we spoilage kam hogi there will be less spoilage and less leakage uh, leakage, leakage losses and the for for the uh, farmer side there will be a, if he maintains a good uh, manufacturing practices he also the cow will be, uh, get sick less and eat uh, more efficiently that somehow that the premiums will be get divided among the whole uh, whole supply chain, chain. so how you yeah. see how you see that how consumer will uh, that at least some part of the consumer uh, some part of that premium should must be paid by the consumers and where is that uh, sweet spot that how how much will be paid by whom there uh, that is one thing we have to consider right so what are your uh, view points on this please yeah i'll be brief on that uh, today the market has segmented into very as i told you there are in terms of price itself they have we have gone to a slightly on a higher price that's what my discussion was about actually saying that uh, for example last uh, 
last one year, around 12 to 18 months period, the price of milk has been increased by 16% at the consumer end. 16%. Has the quality improved? I have a doubt. Anyway, so the, the, there is a price conscious consu consumer whom we have to service. There is a private conscious, conscious con consumer. They have to be serviced, which are low-income people. We cannot drive them away of, out of the system. So the premium will be, will be paid and ready to be paid by the upper income, middle income group, which is the bulk of the Indian consumer who are large consumers are the middle income group people and the high income group. They are ready to pay money. I purchase milk of Indian cow in Bangalore at 160 rupees per year per liter. 160 delivered at home. The price of milk in Bangalore is 50, 48 to 50, 52 rupees. Toned milk or double toned milk, whatever it is. I am ready to pay 3x. So there is a you are, we are, there is a segment which is coming up very quickly, very different, saying that yes, I am ready to pay for quality and for a trace with a trace back mechanism that it is assured that this is an Indian cow milk or a buffalo milk. Bigger dairies cannot do it. I'll be outright say it. Let me very, very clearly say that bigger dairies cannot do it. Are not doing it anyway. Yes, your Randini has started very recently cow milk. Around 80 to, I think it's a double the cost of normal milk which they're selling. That's very recent phenomenon. Meaning the trace back mechanism is absolute must. The Indian consumer wants. Let me repeat, the Indian consumer is ready to pay higher price for fresh cow milk, fresh buffalo milk. I'll just stop with the example of New Zealand. 45 years ago, I had been to New Zealand and they supply liquid milk to all the cities. Fresh liquid milk. Fresh means within 24 hours. It is chilled and pasteurized, agreed. It is not reconstituted milk. Our FSSAI Act was written in an age where there was a shortage of milk. I'll stop so, there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, quite an elaborative viewpoint of Dr. Rajeshwan. So, I guess mere, uh, mere allocation of used sums of money for the quality will not bring quality in the system. Quality <clears> begins <throat> with the intent and which must be fixed with the management. So, now, uh, coming on to the next part of the session, I would like to... Uh, Let's talk to our processing expert, Mr. Sanjay Pandey, who has been fighting proactively with such evils in the industry, uh, what are the adulterations and what are the low quality milk products. So he will be, he is a general manager of quality assurance in the Panas dairy. We will try to uh, now know his viewpoints out that how he is managing the quality and how he's tackling the substandard milk or the any problem he is facing. Up to. So Mr. Mr. Pandey, what is your assessment on the readiness of Indian dairy farmers and processors to deliver superior quality milk? Can the milk production, procurement and processing be increased further while inducting quality experts into the system? Thank you. Thank you, Simrandeep. Uh, so there are a couple of things. You talked about superior uh, quality. Uh, and uh, inducting quality and whether quality would be a hurdle or it would be a enabler. Uh, all these questions are right. But very first thing we need to understand is the superiority of the milk or superior quality of the milk and price of the milk is something which cannot be understood by the common consumers. You know, this is such a delicate subject like when we started saying this proverb, ki kaun kahega ki mera, mera dahi hai? Ye ko hi chuna gaya iske liye? So that is the question, you know, nobody is going to say 
people would say that my milk is only superior they will charge any kind of premium they may add irrelevant kind of or irrational kind of cost also to the product but the discussion will go into tangents if i start addressing the subject of superior quality rather it is more important to understand the right quality because right quality is something which i am trying to put a benchmark right by right quality i mean the quality which is predefined by the legislation by the law of the land okay so if we treat this as the reference or the benchmark and then we try to say that something is really superior to that in terms of adulteration in terms of contaminants in terms of microbiology in terms of like somatic cell count we discuss this is not a parameter also right now uh, by the legislation so yeah, i can probably take it as a superiority superior superiority uh, index that okay this is something which could be related to premium okay uh, so there are several aspects so first thing first that uh, uh, so long as cow is able to deliver the right milk our farmers and processors and all those people who have the right intent to meet the compliance when i when i am uttering the word compliance i mean the right quality i am not talking about something fairly acceptable or superior quality i am i am just in that context i am using the word right that the at least the minimum required requirements of the milk quality of the milk which is already predefined and our challenge is that we are already making some kind of compromise at some level whether those organizations are still very big very big organization is still meeting all the components of the defined quality from start of production to processing to post production activities in supply chain and ultimately delivering the quality which is given in the books of the law there is still there would be some compromise at that point of uh, so say for example what is the challenge the moment we are stuck on the word like superiority of the milk uh, organizations are coming and they are not able to survive multinationals and all who could be little bit at age in terms of knowing the knowledge part i am not saying operating the knowledge part uh, of the superior fresh milk they are not able to survive in the supply chain model of the india then on frontera you know many of them they are not even trying the fresh products they don't dare to try and those so there is something which we call we can call a journey as fairly acceptable quality towards the already defined quality indexes by the law so that is the question in that perspective a lot, lot of talk can still happen i take the first point adulteration how the consumer will know that his his or her milk is right consumer won't be able to know i am suppose a dairy technologist and all the time i am examining the milk only on various parameters and my wife told me that no no i am not going to buy all the milk which you prescribed i would buy from uh, the guy who is delivering in the bottle and he is being trusted by all the neighbors the quality is very good you know he challenged my knowledge of see challenged my knowledge of very technology to to refuse the kind of advice i am giving to her and then i told that don't buy milk on the trust my only point is that at least buy the milk which is already tasted rather than trust go for the tasted so that is the point so adulteration can we attach premium to that adulteration no adulteration is intended intended activity of wrong doing you cannot attach any premium if some milk is adulteration free it is a crime it needs to be the guy needs to be punished it, and where is the problem cow is delivering the right milk i told at the beginning itself mostly it will deliver deliver the right milk provided the hygiene of the place the practices the feed the nutrition health all such things are already defined in the law if you read the bis standards food safety standards 
standards for the farm you will find these are already predefined things problem is that we are not able to manage or maintain all the requirements because cost will go so high and everything will become kind of not so lucrative not so meaningful or not so manageable for the people who are in the dairy business so adulteration no you cannot give any premium to that it has to be milk has to be adulteration free and it is responsibility of everybody that's why i'm saying quality is something which connects more to the compliance intent attitude towards the quality most of the people have on the very high level people people sitting at the highest levels of the organization they have a kind of double speak about the quality what they say and what they do when it is has to be taken from others then all the quality aspects will come but if you have to implement it yourself then your standards will change so that is where quality is getting compromised and we are not able to go into the zone of superiority where we are able to kind of enhance the export of our our, our, our products we are hardly 1 2 3 less than 5% big organization 3% 4% of the exports i am talking about cooperative sector so say for example still we are not able to enhance our uh, exports just because our outlook towards the quality but say for example if we are truly able to manage the quality from contaminants point of view be it aflatoxin be it antibiotics be it pesticides pesticides are not a problem most of the indian milk it could be localized but generally it is less than less than 5% or even lesser than that also antibiotics they are problem depending on the practices those where the farming is more recognized awareness is more uh, uh veterinary ends are aware that uh, ethnovet like uh, kind of diverse kind of medicines also are coming nowadays homeopathy uh, then ayurvedic can also things are being tried and they have some success but most of those things are at sub clinical stage uh, rather than very advanced stages of clinical things so but if you talk about the superiority of the quality and our mindset is that that take a milk of 50000 or 50 lakhs or one uh, crore count per ml of the milk bacterial count and take another milk which is less than 5 lakhs or 6 lakhs very good quality and while it this becomes same no it is not the same if you really mean that quality has to be at the level of the export if it's if it, quality has to be superior and we have to enhance our exports all this factors have have to be considered because food is primarily taste but more than taste nowadays it is nutrition and milk is what milk is a necessity of mankind for nutrition and food we can only argue that whether whether it is uh, whether uh, what kind of or what type of milk is suitable for what kind of people this is something we can ask but it is necessity is it is a necessity for our survival also we so what so types of milk can change so in that perspective i would say that we can pick higher values for the better bacterial counts but again how to measure that if you are bringing that milk some people are measuring at society level some people are measuring at the plant level and then they are presenting that okay my count is less than 1 million or 6 lakhs or whatsoever you know every distance every temperature matters a lot and what point you are measuring and then if you want to do to base your pricing basis that the one the one location or site which is farther from the plant there are chances even after even if you have added preservative into that which is allowed to preserve the samples and then you are testing the semantic count or the bacterial count whatsoever the still chances are that and you are bringing them in refrigeration condition to the plant is still in 4 3 to 4 hour lapse of the time the count almost gets double under refrigeration refrigerated condition also so how are we going to base pricing we can keep some we can keep some intense uh, incentives we can give reward to that because ultimately we end up give, giving rewards for example i am saying that no we cannot accept adulterated milk and it is a crime and it should be penalized 
but suppose i have to excel in the industry and based on the quality then i end up paying premium to maintain those farmers or those sources of supplies because i have to remain viable and uh, as i told quality is enabler it is never a hurdle brands are big and global just because they have that kind of brand power reputation which is built on the quality it is not other way otherwise you will be a very small player in a small area if you have to bother about your brand power you have to we have to maintain certain uh, uh, integrity in your processes integrity of people integrity of product integrity of processes at all stages so it is it is something which is dependent on your ethical value of the organization it's more about the people so quality is deteriorating not because of cow not because of farmer not because because of processor we cannot attribute it to the class rather you can say it is due to the compliance mindset of the people who are engaged in the business so oh, that's a very well put thoughts into uh, into the answer so uh i well very appreciate your your review uh so moving on the further <clears throat> as mr pande said milk quality involves participation of everybody in dairy supply chain we have to create a quality milk culture for assisting our nation's food safety security programs turning to our policy expert mr shridhar uh, do we have mr shridhar in our audience sir hello hello mr shridha are you there hello mr shridha it appears there is some connection issue with uh, mr shridhar uh, he is calling hello uh so if you can try to reconnect uh sorry for disturbances uh mr shridhar will reconnect in in a just while uh till then i i would like to ask mr sanjay pande that what are your viewpoints about on uh, consumer education part that you are saying that uh, consumers are not aware ki, how to assess milk quality that they are going for most of the uh, that consumer confidence kind of approach to what they should buy or what they should not buy so how a consumer should be educated that what is right and what is wrong sir please turn your on mic please yes see the need the dire need of uh, education is more uh, on the part of the producers and marketers more than the consumer consumer is kind of consumer is at the receiving end of the things you know so and it is not quite possible other than doing some kind of advertisement or putting ads about your brand that my milk is uh the best milk or the super milk kind of stuff so the most of the the need for education is for farmers for the farming practices how to have better quality of milk in the in the processing uh, plants throughout the supply chain because you know the best the most uh, um, most uh, applicable cause of deterioration of quality of milk in our case is temperature temperature is the biggest abuse i would say despite all the intent of maintaining good quality milk temperature is one such factor factor throughout the supply chain starting from producer to the processor because there also we have a mentality of saving one or two degree people see every one degree of temperature below 6 degree centigrade is going to add 6 to 8 hours of extra self life to your product it is so many cool but we do not understand the, the 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 value of this keeping the milk or the food products at the right temperature 
so uh, i would take this question in this way that uh, consumer probably cannot be trained say for example if we are selling our milk as cow milk or buffalo milk or breed specific milk or a species cow buffalo a1 a2 kind of milk consumer would be very uh, uh, he will be at loss to understand that whether it is really pure or not because definition of purity itself is not defined legally somebody would say 1% purity is good enough somebody would say 5% 95% pure somebody would say 90% pure there is no legislation on that and then the fact very fact is that indian milk is itself 75 80% purity is already there without doing anything because uh, most of the milk is from buffaloes and uh, cows so uh, uh, these are the kind of questions that uh, what purity uh, is the uh, purity even if you do rt pcr test or pcr uh, kind of test there also you will not be able to ascertain to the right percentage unless you set up a farm by testing the blood uh, of the milk animals whether they were a, a, a2 or not a1 or not like i am talking about the breed specific and then uh, species specific if your whole farm is buffalo and then you are taking milk from there only then then something uh, you can say but customer or consumer is not always going to know there is a difference between b2b business customers and consumers customers can know because they have a system of audit and evaluation and it is good that they are the one who is driving the market most of the consumers are also driven by the customers or the distributors because they are educating the consumer that okay this is this is the power of my brand these are the good things about my brand they have some audit system they are inspecting they are checking they are accepting the product from the producer only when they are meeting the basic criteria of the right plan right de- right design right quality etc the whole system i am talking about whole whole quality system so, very thoughtful of you sir uh, now we will like to welcome mr tarun shridhar uh due to some problems he would he has turned late i don't know i was i was i was able to hear all of you i was able to see all of you enjoying enjoying this discussion yeah. i'm it's, glad i got to hear some more yeah it's very sir we are very happy to have you on board sir so so coming to the our uh, our discussion i would like to ask you that what is your view points on the current pricing system does it take accounts for the paying or going paying as per the quality basis or at least encourage encourage the farmers to produce quality and uh, and limit adulterations through the measures taken by the pricing policy or pricing formula what are your view points on that please okay thank you all simrandeep for this this opportunity uh, i would not like to i think you were mentioning that our quality experts or something uh, let me assure all the eminent panelists and the participants that i am no expert i have never neither been a dairy farmer nor a processor nor a dairy person i just happen to work in this department uh, in some important positions and been involved with policy at uh, various steps and having heard you especially with respect to the issue of mastitis and the kind of economic and the quality losses uh, on account of that i wish i could have done something more about it uh, than i could when i was uh, in, in in a position let me put it in a in a slightly dif- different way you see in terms of our entire agriculture production as also the livestock production in which dairy is uh, the undisputed king all through our policy and focus has been on quantity quantity and quantity production 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 quality and productivity have never been the focus of policies historically now there is a i would not like to criticize this policy as it is there has there has been a very sound historical reasons for this you all are uh, much younger but uh, and you would have only read it uh, but i will i have seen it in my childhood the days of pl480 when we had to stand in long queues to buy our monthly quota of wheat and then economize using that to very substandard quality of wheat which was basically imported on very humiliating conditions at the cost of the self respect of the of the nation from various countries abroad as far as milk is concerned i remember as a as a school school boy having stood in long queues early in the morning at 5 or 6 in the dairy winters 
waiting for your turn to get uh, milk bottle from the daily milk supply booth, the MS booth. And when you reach uh, the finally reach the counter, the fellow says that your bottle is chipped from the top. I will not take this bottle. You get a fresh bottle or you pay for this bottle. So we have gone through that. No, so milk is a story of an outstanding success. Let me put it this way. We may be criticizing quality and other things. And when uh, the Operation Flood was launched, much after the Operation uh, Green Revolution, we were at about 20, I think, uh, Mr. Sanjay Pandey and others, Mr. Rajeshwaran would bear me out. We were at about, about 22 million tons uh, production in the entire country. From 22 billion tons in half a century, we have reached 210 million tons. From a country suffering acute deficit, an acute deficit of food grains, acute deficit of milk, with the result, acute food deficit, and till date, we are suffering nutrition deficit. From that, we have reached up to 200 million metric, metric ton. Undisputed uh, world leader. Number two is USA, who is not even half of uh, what, uh, what we are. So this is a wonderful story as far as quantity is concerned. Now coming to quality aspect. I am reminded of those uh, famous opening lines of uh, the Charles Dickens uh, famous novel, A Tale of Two Cities, which, uh, what is, does he say? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Uh, it was an age of wisdom. It was an age of foolishness. It was a period of light. It was a period of darkness. So this is where our livestock sector and dairy stands. We are the biggest in terms of production. We are the smallest in terms of productivity. We are biggest in terms of quantity. We are poorest in terms of quality. So now is the time when there has to be a paradigm shift, primarily in people like me who are in the policy making situations that now our policies should be oriented and guided towards quality. What quality? No point in taking pride in the fact now, like. Recently, I was in, in, in Bhima where I'm addressing some students of fishery science. I asked, do you know that uh, by 2030, we will beat China and become the biggest populous nation in the world? They started clapping. I said, is it something which uh, you should be clapping at? So today, if we say we are the biggest uh, livestock population in the world, we should now move to saying that we shall be producing this much quantity of milk with half the livestock population that, that, that we have. Once we address this issue of productivity of, of animals, then we will be issuing the issue of quality of animals also. They're all experts sitting, so I will not dwell much on the topic. When you said quality, right now you see milk, milk pricing is very unique. It is very, very complicated. Because of the, the Philip given to milk production by Operation Flood and the entire bias of the government for organizing dairy and milk production in cooperatives. Cooperatives still may be handling only 20 to 25% only. But they may be handling only 25%, one-fourth. But at least they are leading the market in terms of determining how the markets will behave. In terms of product mix, how the markets will behave in terms of pricing. So it is basically how Amul prices its milk, how Nandini prices or how the various state cooperatives price the milk, which ultimately leads the private sector to its own pricing. With their private sector comes into a slight disadvantage because they do not get the... the underwriting of the various uh, costs uh, which go into milk production, which the cooperatives have been uh, have been benefited with. So right now, quality is not determining the milk price in the bulk of the milk market. Uh, someone mentioned in term terms of buying milk for 160 rupees a kg. I agree there is a, there is a market for niche products, high-end products, quality products, but this market is still in a nascent stage, although developing, developing fast, but right now developing in, in urban centers. All through some of the delivery apps, etc., which are available. However, a word of caution. In many of these areas and these markets, uh, some commodities, milk-based commodities, or some better processed milk, etc., are being sold at exorbitant prices by misleading labels or by misleading information. So your quality is going to suffer once are these misleading labels, etc., get, get uh, exposed. Secondly, how do you ensure quality of milk? It's not... I am not a veterinary scientist. I am not a dairy scientist. But two, three things I have learned over a period of time having been involved is, number one, you should have a very, very good breed improvement program in terms of healthy and productive animals. How do you ensure a healthy animal? Number one, a continuously ongoing breed improvement program, number one. Number two, a program for balanced nutrition for animals. That is number two. Number three is a good animal health management regime. 
these three things you need to handle and these three things we, we need to focus. Lastly, on the quality issue, we need to determine and distinguish between what is a standard, what is a quality. Right now, we are confusing. There is an overlap between standard and quality, but these are two distinct terms. I think it was very, very aptly mentioned earlier that quality is something which the consumer will determine. Adherence to standard is the basic minimum. Thereafter start, starts the quality. That is what the consumer will determine. Not only his, uh, his preferences, but also his perception about the perceived qualities of a, of a particular product. That is where there is a responsibility between uh, passed upon people like you and me. I would not use the word educate the consumer because that is very patronizing. Uh, we think that consumer doesn't know. We were mentioning that people still uh, boy, boil milk or there's still a preference for a particular cow milk or desi cow milk versus that cow milk. Let us not try to educate the consumer, but let us try to give him all the information so that he can make an informed decision. Unfortunately, we are, we are bound by certain cultural and religious beliefs in our country, wherein we have accorded superiority to one breed of animal over another breed of animal, and resultantly superior, superiority, superiority to the quality of milk of one breed of animal over the quality of milk of another breed of animal. I have no quarrel with holding these beliefs. Again, it's a question of personal consumer preference, but let this preference and choice be exercised on the basis of sound, robust, correct information with respect to the relative composition, standards, and parameters of milk. Lastly, I would say, if we have to also address this issue of quality and the competitiveness of milk, let us not neglect the buffalo. We always talk of cow, cow, cow. And somehow, we are, we are also, again, it's a historical baggage we are, we are carrying that uh, everything negative gets associated with cow. Kala, Akshar, Bhais, Barabar. Whereas every positive attribute is, uh, is, is to the, the cow. You see, in terms of global competitiveness of dairy, we are undisputed leaders in terms of buffalo. We are the only country in the world which boasts of a huge buffalo population and huge buffalo milk, which is, if not better, as good as uh, cow milk. Third, secondly, the buffalo milk is that the texture and composition of buffalo milk is such that buffalo milk can give you variety of products, especially the products which are traditionally what we call the Indian sweets, the khoya based products, the paneer based products, etc., etc., and also what to call of the mozzarella cheese. You know, Italy has only five lakh bu buffaloes, and uh, there's those are five lakh buffaloes are only for mozzarella cheese. And that mozzarella cheese has been registered with the European Union and nobody can sell a cheese by the name of mozzarella cheese unless it is made from those uh, buffaloes. So it is a, it's a question of having branded that. What is Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola is the largest selling beverage in the world. What is it? Can anybody tell what is Coca-Cola? It's the largest selling beverage, beverage in the world. So why is it that we, we cannot be actually branding our buffalo milk as milk which is much richer in, in fat. In fact, I had coined, coined, coined a slogan that uh, milk without uh, malai and this fat is like uh, scotch without alcohol. So we could, we could actually think in terms of uh, promoting and projecting our buffalo milk. And lastly, I will say, you see, somehow in terms of dairy products, uh, the pro one commodity which has captured the global markets is chocolate. Now the Western world, except for chocolates or some such pies and chocolate-based or the alike products don't have much to show in terms of sweets. You travel from Kashmir to Kanyakumari or from uh, the Northeast to Gujarat, the immense variety of sweets and all of them milk and dairy based, which we have is, is phenomenal. Nowhere in the world would you have this. This is again a huge opportunity for the dairy industry to, to, to push for value addition of milk, value addition in terms of traditional Indian sweets, maybe with some kind of a fusion to, uh, to cater to global taste. Because somebody mentioned uh, exports. We, we are exports are very, very minimal and we have nothing to show. I am not worried about export. Why should we be bothered so much of exports? Because our milk would not fetch as good a price in the mar export markets as here. Because our entire pricing is also determined in terms of uh, a, a equitable balance between consumer and the farmer. Milk is after the only commodity 
where the price fluctuation you will learn where you find more than 10 to 15 percent price price fluctuation the lean season price will be only 10 percent different from the flush season uh, season price unlike say onions and tomatoes etc where prices fall by as much as 80 to 90 percent sometimes as a negative you to farmers pay people to just take their product because this will dispose of is enough milk price by and large remain stable there is not huge fluctuation in the price because the primary primary producer also manages to get about 60 percent of what the final consumer pays so these are some of the strengths with these trends, now time has come to move to quality, but let us define what quality is. And I would say quality would be value addition. And in terms of Indian consumer, for Indian consumer, the biggest quality is freshness. Biggest quality is freshness. If that fresh chain, supply chain can be maintained, that would be wonderful. One very good thing is our friends from the industry are there. The dairy industry is now moving well towards uh, traceability. And in fact, the organized dairy has gone up for traceability up to the primary collection center. Now, I think the next step is to go up to a particular cattle or a particular breed. How far we, how fast we can do is will also depend upon our milk model because uh, we are producing 210 million uh, tons of milk, but there's also 121 million animals producing that and 80 million uh, households producing that. So one half a liter pack could be having milk from 50, 60 different uh, animals. So whether we'll be able to reach up to a particular animal or no, good. But we have reached up to a primary collection center. So we can actually, at a micro level, we can manage it. I don't know whether I've answered your question or not because your question, Simranandi, was so specific. And I was a bit hesitant because I don't I, I don't have knowledge of the markets or anything. All I know is I'm an armchair policy maker. So having, having, having interacted with experts like you, I have gained something. Thank you so much. Uh, sir, one more thing I want to ask you that uh, uh, at the IDF, WDS, uh, Mr. Sodi mentioned about uh, uh, that we are heading towards that going to have a surplus milk in the in coming 2030, 2050. And, and that and export markets definitely demand for that uh, quality products, right? So how policy experts are having an assessment that about the uh, dairy industry that uh, is it ready for the global market and how it, it will make it ready? Amko, do we need to go to the global market as, one, uh, as one thing you have said, ki, uh, the better pricing, the better farmer to consumer ratios of um, what they are earning, it's better in the national settings that we have, don't need to go global. But in the, with the uh, statements got contrary to that, what Sodi has said into an idea. That you see, if, if, Mr. if Mr. Sodi has made a statement uh, now, with Mr. Sodi standing in dairy industry, I, I don't think it will it is for me to be contradicting what Mr. Sodi has said. And I would I and Mr. Sodi is a very dear friend, and I've learned a lot from Mr. Sodi, and we interact even now. So I will put it this way: what do we mean by surplus? What is the meaning of surplus? You see, let us understand. We are a country which with a very large vegetarian population, which does not consume animal protein in any other form except milk. Large communities don't even consume eggs. So only way they consume animal protein is milk. Now we had, uh, again, uh, subject to correction by the eminent experts there, I think our per capita availability of milk, because we don't use the word consumption, we use the word availability. Availability of milk was about 110 or 115 uh, grams per capita per day at the launch of Operation Flood. Today it is uh, nearly, it is more than 400, I think 430 grams per person per day. Global average is 390. Now, is it surplus or is it an opportunity for us now to start moving from raw milk to value-added products? Once we move to value-added products, only thereafter we will know how many of the markets, global and domestic, we can capture. It is not surplus. It is an, I would say it's an opportunity to now move from raw milk to value added. Some of the dairy experts told me that as far as the Indian sweets is concerned and traditionally the, our traditional halwais, they generate four times the value through, through various value added products. Whereas in, the, in terms of the typical Western products like uh, chocolates and cakes, etc., et what gets uh, value added and gets translated into money is only one and a half times or at the most two times to what the 
same amount of raw milk will uh, fetch. Whereas in Indian mithais, khoa based mithais and other milk chana based and khoa based mithais where primary source is milk, what the raw milk fetches, you get three to four times uh, after the value addition. So this is an opportunity before you. Now you typically what happens? Khoya is your is a, is a bulk consumption. Now khoya, but they, we we don't have we don't have the systems. Their technologies are available to preserve khoya. So khoya doesn't typically when we our halwais make khoya, it doesn't last for more than say 30, 36 to forty eight hours. And suddenly there is a glut of markets during uh, mithais during Diwali etc. That is when the integrity of the mithais and the your sweets get gets gets questioned that they are poor quality. They don't adhere to standards. They are adulterated. Whereas round the year you have this opportunity to convert your what you call surplus or what I would say is raw milk into into khoya, which can further be used for various kind of products. This is something some something which we should be uh, as as collectively thinking and and moving towards. So I would not use the word surplus. We are Kasabu not use the surplus. We have an opportunity to expand the milk market and also diversify it from raw milk to value added products. And I would reiterate the amount and the the sheer variety of value added products which we have nowhere no no country in the world has that. Very well put by you. Very well. Uh, so I think white. The White Revolution 2.0 will be collabor uh, will be a collaboration of all involved stakeholders who have a goal to make dairy supply chain better, safer, and more sustainable, working together to ensure better practices and outcomes. Moving towards our next segment, which is roundtable discussion, I encourage all of you participate uh, part to participate enthusiastically and share your viewpoints so at least we can come up with a, a practical action plan that will be instrumental in revolutionizing industry, starting up with Mr. Rajat Pandey. What is your, uh, what, uh, after some uh, mastitis and SSC, what are your viewpoints about uh, uh, assessing antibiotic residues, bacterial road, aflatoxins, and adulterations by the means of technology? I think yes, uh, it is very important uh, uh, to to test for uh, uh, these uh, um, antibodies, um, uh, antibiotics, and uh, the residue and other um, important uh, markers uh, in the in the milk and in the supply chain. Um, but that's as as I said earlier, uh, we have to start from point A to solve for a, for a problem which is at point point D or point Z. Uh, and that's where uh, I think, uh, and, and, and the biggest reason of the cause for uh, such parameters is obviously the health of the animal. So um, on the technology side, uh, uh, we see that there, there are, the technology has in, evolved and has improved drastically in the last 10 to 15 years on point of care devices and other uh, uh, handheld lab level uh, and, and lab level devices where testing can be done uh, at farm level and also it can be rapid and very cost effective so um, <clears throat> we are also working on that and also there are a lot of other companies interesting companies working on <clears throat> developing and providing such um, uh, instruments and devices uh, for, uh, for, the, for the farmers uh, because they need to uh, adapt and uh, uh, start uh, mm -hmm. the usage um, <clears throat> and then also uh, needs to be supported by the milk unions, private dairy brands, and other uh, key players, stakeholders. So, uh, and then eventually, obviously, has to be supported big time that the government uh, departments uh, at national level, at state level. So it's an entire ecosystem starting from from the farmer to to the minister, uh, I would say, which has to uh, work collectively collectively for imp implementation and use of uh, such new technologies. Mr. Sanjay Pandey, would you like to add something to it? Yeah, this is a very interesting question. Uh, because see, you talked about uh, antibiotic, aflatoxin and all. Uh, my viewpoint on this is antibiotics are basically drugs. So this could be, to a great extent, it could be because there are some other drugs. Then the question is about identifying the drugs. Because if you can stop one, we'll switch over to another types. But uh, mostly sulfur-related drugs, tetracycline, beta-lactam, and all those things, uh, 
uh, of this sulfur drugs quinolones these are very much uh, exercised in india and we are noticing that uh, this is very prevalent uh, but uh, on the contrary wherever there is knowledge about it nowadays a lot of knowledge is spreading about the ethnovat also ayurvedic and all such treatments homeopathic treatments so uh, things are improving uh, concern i would sound more on the of lot toxin related uh, stuff because we are a very large geography as a country and uh, somewhere there are pastures green pastures uh, green fodder is available and uh, there is no need to store the fodder feed uh, uh, etc whatever we are providing to the farmers most of the cooperative feed plants per se they are making loss uh, it is a kind of service we are doing to the farmers Uh, but if we truly use the kind of standards which is already laid down for the uh, for the maize wheat uh, rice bran etc or overall toxin load uh, b1 toxin load in the into the feed ingredients uh, it is very hard uh, to meet the cost aspect or the pricing of that uh, because many times we as a human being are not able to get the flat toxin free uh, cereals or grains so how come you are going to feed your animals with that kind of quality uh, uh, crops so storage uh, and then the climatic conditions the rain uh, etc uh, dry versus wet areas in our country these are all making the condition very complicated somewhere you can easily achieve these standards elsewhere how however hard you try you are not able to meet the certain uh, these parameters so we cannot just copy paste the western or european uh, standards and this has to be seen in the light of india uh, that uh, what should be the right level otherwise otherwise they are just the kind these are the kind of the rules which exist in the books and will not be able to exercise I would like to request Dr. Rajesh Warren if he he wants to add something. Good morning. Yeah, can you just come back on that, uh, Simran? Can you just come back on the question you had raised? Uh, sir, I'm. Uh, I have asked about uh, that. What? Uh, how about uh, the other parameters that antibiotic residues, bacterial load, aspherical toxins? How they are going to influence, and what are their importance into the system? yeah they are important i just leave it at that i mean it's, it's too, but to cost too costly as such to even uh, check at any point of time and as uh, sanjay told i mean i mean he himself has given the answer saying that pesticide free and chemical free cereals if you are trying to feed animals livestock i think you are in a serious uh, problem area because we are feeding ruminants i mean as a veterinarian we have taught animals have got four stomachs and they are they are designed for eating grass which has cellulose okay western some country western countries wanted we didn't have grass or something like that so they just started feeding concentrates as such but to just cut and copy paste and he himself says sanjay also admits that it is not cost effective if it is not cost effective for the cattle feed plant it is it is definitely no cost effective for the farmer 70% of the money goes 70 7 sorry 70% of the money even today variable cost goes to uh, for uh, towards feed feed cost and even every paise every percentage point in decrease in that cost is going to create a huge impetus to the farmer individual farmer so uh, that's a different issue altogether but uh, quality i exist i just leave it at that saying that mastitis control is prevention not not treatment sorry i mean i am very clear about All that Uh, i would just add that all these testing these are all a kind of post mortem activity see i know in my mill i know that okay this is the level i am achieving during this seasonal period you know so i know it by month by month that what is going to be the level of aflatoxin what is going to be the level of something i am not talking about something unusual like lumpy has happened and then it has changed the whole scenario that is that is something very uh, abnormal unpredictable kind of condition but otherwise if you talk about the data per se we know that where are we and it is only a post mortem activity which we are doing by the testing 
but when it comes to the real prevention and the kind of cost input has to go to control that there there i think we need to be more practical and uh, we should make our own standards rather than adapting anything which is enforced on us from west i am totally with you and sanjay i mean actually i am i very i you are very putly i mean i could not express it so clear than better than you thank you <laughs> yeah uh, there is one more question about it i would would like to ask every one of you the how unorganized market is is affecting the quality aspects of the quality aspects of the milk that how the uh, milk which is offered by the unorganized market is affecting our standards and our our understanding about the what is the quality needs to be delivered that how consumers are what consumers want actually that how it is confusing us to understand the consumers demand uh starting with uh, mr pandey mr sanjay pandey sir see uh, i see the plight of the unorganized market they were making a kind of good livelihood from selling these small quantities they are already being marginalized by the organized sector that is how i see it because and this will happen because there are more standards are at play new kinds of adulteration planned wrong doings are happening with food and milk also so i am not saying that uh, uh, organized industry is putting kind of unrealistic burden on the unorganized sector but uh, uh, they are already facing the kind of plight you know they are, and uh, they have their own challenges uh, only thing is that that with the advent or with the growth of uh, organized sector uh, they would probably attach to the organized sector like take for example of gujarat what has happened most of these farmers they would have been unorganized at one point of time but since there is started give, uh, giving them better uh, remuneration for their milk or at least they are caring or they are taking care of their demands and the needs they are eventually attaching to the organized sector so uh, at some point with uh, application of technology more uh, standards quality etc required to be put into the product uh, industry will move towards the organized sector more and more Uh, and uh, those sectors will also align with the organized sectors. Uh, something you want to add, Mr. Rajeshwar, Dr. Rajeshwar? Sorry, pardon me. Yeah, I'll just add by saying that see, unorganized sector even today is a major player. The reason is not the quality of milk. It's yeah. it's an orthogonal story. It is the cash, both at the purchase end and at the sales end. if i go to any private player or a cooperative if i want to buy milk i have to pay cod cash on delivery whereas if i go to unorganized market i can always pay it at the end of the month both at the consumer end similarly the producer end also the farmer wants in advance money he wants to cut out the production risk and the market risk and therefore he pays in advance he he wants the money in advance period unfortunately the organized sector cares a damn sorry let me very blatant about it the organized sector cares a damn about neither or the consumer or the producer in terms of in terms of the money requirement yeah. price is not the story at all yeah. price is not the story and therefore he try he or she thrives the unorganized will thrive i'm sorry sanjay unorganized sector will will thrive yeah i yeah. write it right. give it to you i write it and yeah, give yeah. it to you no 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 i agree with you i my perspective was more driven from the cooperative sector which is little bit more caring and their I'm money is granted sorry. <laughs> so my my understanding was coming from there I, but you are right yeah. i hope the cooperative sector is, uh, is understanding i i have i i have worked in the cooperative sector yeah and i know how people are mistreated yeah yeah correct sorry i the only reason the only reason that they remain in our organization is the need for money i can totally agree on this part i can totally agree with you on this part but i also see like say for example i am part of banas dairy and we are paying 851 rupees per kg of fat and in the entire cooperative sector across the world we are the highest in the world and the kind the amount the bonus etc so my perspective i answered it purely from the cooperative and what we are doing to the farmers we have 205 uh, 
veterinarians, almost 250 medical staff only to support them and service them. So perspective is a little bit different. So I answered from, from that angle, but they are rather exploited by other private sector. That is also true. So uh, Mr. Rils Pandya, are you available? So uh, during your R&D phase, do you happen to uh, get en encountered with the organized sector that how uh, how the milk is over there? That Have you tested over the, with the fauna or that milk? What is your experience of the unorganized market? Yeah, so uh, we, we have uh, done our initial pilots with uh, uh, milk unions, with private dairy brands, with the uh, Department of Animal Husbandry, veterinary services, hospital clinics. And yes, we've also done with the private, small and medium-sized marginal farmers. Um, but as the experts have already talked about, uh, that farmer with two or three animal needs cash every day uh, because that's their bread and butter. And um, when we talk to them about uh, new technology, what we have or other important uh, factors, you know, to be taken care of, like uh, mastitis and other diseases, or even improving the quality of animal, uh, the health, they are aware about all of that. But then, yes, their their gap or or their uh, uh, you know appetite to to take care of uh, uh, such important things is uh, at the fourth or fifth. Uh, uh, importance, I would say. Their first importance is to, you know, uh, take care of the animal, uh, pull out uh, fresh milk and then get cash uh, on the same day. So that's where, uh, and then a lot of time, uh, you know, they, they bear losses uh, because of, uh, you know, diseases. So also getting the medical intervention and all the other uh, stuff is, is a little difficult for them uh, being, you know, the smallest in the in the in the system or in the in the vertical so obviously th that's where you know the need is to give them the support from or uh, give them the support from the the obviously the departments the government departments state government and other uh, milk uh, uh, union brands and private brands who are supporting i know amul is doing phenomenal job uh, even uh, nandini and all the milk unions they do phenomenal job by supporting the farmers with animal husbandry departments. And they have a like huge force of veterinarians, of, of uh, LRPs, VRPs on the ground, and they provide the services almost free of cost, which is uh, commendable. So that's where we need to build that ecosystem to support that small uh, and medium-sized uh, farmer. That's my <clears throat> personal view. We can provide the technologies, but they don't have the means to buy our device uh you know even if i go and tell them that yeah you know we'll provide you a well you know a diagnostics as a service uh you know they 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 will still be least interested to even pay as a service model because you know That's it's an well it's put, an up, uh, very well put up, upfront well, cost uh, for them uh, yeah actually, i want i would like to stop you here that has been approaching very quickly towards our time limits for the session right. i'm afraid we have to stop here so here we have had a good and wholesome discussion about milk quality and how it can be showed for the end consumer, whether he, he or she is sitting in the rural India or he is sitting in a global settings. So at lastly, I would like to request our experts to give an audience a one-liner short parting message, concluding remarks, starting up with Mr. Sridhar. One-liner. Hmm? Okay, let's... One liner, two liner. <laughs> as you feel like it. okay let's 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 change the perspective let's start looking at our dairy in terms of uh, quantity to value in terms of volume to value that's my one liner talk of value not volume dr rajeshwan yeah it's a it's a uh, world is just opening up i'm i'm very clear about that the dairy industry is just we are not even touched the age of that story as such and that is the, it's going to benefit every farmer in the country, across the country, I'm sure. I have, it's a great opportunity we are in. Yeah. So, Mr. Rajat Pandya, sir, what's your one line of Yeah, I would, I would just say uh, every, every drop of milk uh, tell us, uh, or, you know, can tell and tell us a lot about the health of the animal and uh, the quality of milk. So, we need to uh, test it right. Uh, at the farm level and uh, um, help the entire sector. Mr. Sanjay Pandey, what's, what's your parting message for the audience? Yeah, 
So milk is food and we have looked at food as something we have related it to more of taste and everything but going forward I think uh, food is to be seen as nutrition that is where the value addition and quality aspects will be seen and still as I told uh, during my discussion that milk is necessity of mankind for nutrition and food. Uh, milk will still play a much larger role. All kinds of plant milk and everything, all the hype we are hearing, but milk is going to uh, still remain one of the prime source of nutrition. Thanks a lot. From my side, I would say farms and beyond. So dairy is just not farming and this is not just milk. It's very beyond thing. It's livelihoods, it's culture. It's, uh, it's just happiness, I want to say. So audience, I would like to thank you a lot. Thanks for being a so amazing and supportive audience and contribute towards the session. Your presence and support is precious to us. This was Monetizing Quality, Going Beyond Fat and SNF, organized by Yardbakari India. Good luck, goodbye, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.